What? Put up your hands if you've ever been in love. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Love is just the greatest thing ever, isn't it? It's just the greatest emotion, the greatest feeling, especially when you're just first and newly in love. Then it's like, it's like someone's pumped your body full of helium, right? You're just kind of floating along. You just can't stop smiling. You're just so excited about this new found love and this spark that it just fills you up to overflowing. I have another question. How many of you ever dated someone long distance? Put up your hand. Okay, quite a few of you. Did, did it work out? Did, it, did any of you marry that person? Okay, that, well, these are great stories. These are great stories because dating long distance is the worst. It's just, it's just miserable. When I was dating my wife, when we were still dating, we lived a long ways apart. I was in Port Coquitlam. She was in Vancouver. It was just dreadful. It was just <laughs> dreadful, that distance between us. Being in love is just the greatest thing. And when you're, when you're dating someone long distance, at least when we were dating, it was really before Skype had caught on, it was before texting, it was constant. It was really all about one thing. It was all about the letter, right? Yeah, I can see you nodding your heads. You just, you just pour your heart out on a piece of paper, page after page, lovey, 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 right? Just all your emotions, every, every thought that you had so that they could know about it. And you'd write it all down. You'd fold it up so carefully, so delicately. Uh, maybe the girl would spray it with a bit of perfume, <laughs> right? The guy like that, he'd try and respond. He'd rub some deodorant on it. <laughs> <laughs> And so then, then on the other end, that person is just waiting so desperately for that letter. They don't want to miss it, so they're checking the mailbox a few times a day. They know the postman by name. Any letters for me today, they're just so excited about it. They just don't want to miss getting that letter. And when they finally get it, they take it home. They rip it open right away as soon as they get there. They're on the couch. They unfold it, and they just read it again and again and again and again until they have each and every word memorized because they're so desperate to hear that news from the person that they love. You know, a lot of people have felt like their relationship with God, that they're kind of seeing him long distance. You know, like there's this, this just gulf, this distance, this separation between them, and it doesn't matter how hard they try, it just seems like they just can't reach up far enough to connect with God. Like somehow he is separated and removed from them. And you know, we don't just feel that way. Maybe you felt that way sometimes before, but God also feels that distance. God also has felt that separation. And he didn't like it. So he wanted to do something about it. And so God sent uh, people with his messages, words of love and care and concern. We call them prophets. They came and spoke God's word to them, and people wrote it down, wrote down what they said, and uh, we have that recorded for us in the Bible. I, I often think of the Bible as God's love letter to the word, expressing his heart and care and concern for his people. But, you know, as great as it is to have the letter... You know, it's great to read, but it just isn't the same as wrapping your arms around somebody. Uh, take a moment right now, hug the person beside you. <laughs> if you just hugged a stranger, good for you. <laughs> That's great. You know, it's just, it's hugging a letter. Having the letter just isn't the same as having the person. And so God was sending his prophets. They were writing down what God had to say to them. They were reading it and memorizing it. But it just wasn't the same as having that person there. And it reminds, reminds me of this passage from John chapter 1 that says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Somehow in the beginning before God created anything else, before he did anything else that we know of, up there with him in heaven was this word, and it was with God, and it was, was God. Almost like God had this letter there with him, this word. And God didn't like the distance that had grown between us, and so just a few verses later it says this. It says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling place among us. 
That word, that letter that had always been with God and was part of God became flesh. It means that he he became a human. He became a human being just like you and me. And that's what we're here to celebrate tonight, that this human that was also God came and was born, just this tiny little baby, and laid in a manger. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus came and he was just as real as you or I. You could, you could touch him, you could talk to him, you could wrap your arms around him and hug him and feel him hug you back. God didn't like that distance, and so he came to do something about it. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas, that God came to us. And they gave him the name Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. You see, that distance, that long distance feeling that we have between us and God isn't about kilometers, it's not about miles, it's not about space or time, it's about sin. Any time that we don't love God with everything that we've got, every time we don't love our neighbor just like ourselves, well, that's called sin. And it builds this barrier between us and other people, this barrier between us and God. And so Jesus came to save us from that, to rescue us from that, And God did that by coming and being born here, by living his life for us, by dying innocently on a cross, and a few days later, rising again victorious from the grave. And that all starts at Christmas. And what I've been wondering about this year, the past month or six weeks or so, I've really been wondering about about that innkeeper, Right, we read about there was no room for them in the inn. When you read that, don't think about the days inn, right, or the holiday inn. We're not talking about hundreds of rooms with elevators and phoning to make a reservation. We're probably talking about a guy with a couple spare rooms in his house. And there's this big event going on in Bethlehem as everyone rushes to register with the census. And this guy's got some open rooms. He fills people into them. And how many of you have companies staying with you right now? Okay, so you can relate to this man, right? He's got, he, he's got his own room, and then he's got people sleeping in the guest room. There's people on the couch. He blows up the air mattress, even though it's got a hole in it, because they always have a hole in it. You almost pay for the hole. And so it means he's got people everywhere. It's packed. He's committed to these people. And then there's a knock at the door, and it's a couple more people. It's this young man, Mary, uh, Joseph, and his very pregnant wife, Mary. And this innkeeper, what is he supposed to do? He's already committed to all these other people that are already moved into his rooms, his place, but what can he do with this young couple that's so desperately in need? He has no more room in his house, but he says, you can stay with my animals, where my animals stay. And so that's what happens. And, and what I've really been just trying to sort out this year is, did the innkeeper see what was happening, or did he miss it? Is it possible that the innkeeper heard the angels or noticed these shepherds trooping onto his property? Is it possible that he heard that the baby had been born and went in and, and picked up and even held baby Jesus in his own hands? Or did he miss it? Is it possible that all those things happen? Angels singing, shepherds marching in, God being born right there in his own manger, and did he miss it? Not because he was a bad guy, just because he's busy, right? He's got all these people there. He's trying to sort out these people. He's trying to get food prepared for them. He's trying to get, you know, water for them, blankets, all those things. And it reminds me so much of us. We're so busy I mean, especially right now, I think if you're like me, I've been shopping and buying and wrapping and taping and rewrapping because the first time it didn't go very well. And, I've been, you know, people have been getting food ready and shopping and buying for that and just preparing all these things and decorating and putting up the tree. And, I mean, we're just so busy and I just don't want us to miss it. I- I just don't want us to miss that it's not about the food, it's not about the turkey, it's not about the presents, it's not about the lights, it's not about the tree, it's not about whose house we're having dinner at, but it's all about Jesus, about the Word made flesh who came to save us from our sins.
the one who came to live and die and rise again for you and me because he loves us so much. God didn't just send a letter. He came himself. And that's good news for us, that God made us and he loves us so much. He saw the separation and the distance between us and he overcame it through his own precious life, death, and resurrection. And that's Christmas. And that's what we celebrate, is our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Is that good news for us today? Amen. All God's people said, amen. Amen. We're going to respond to God's good news and gracious love to us now through our offering.